Hey YouTube, what's up? My name is David. So last year, February 11th, I uploaded a video called Make Boring Vlogs Better. Today, we're making a version two of that, an updated version where my quality is 10 times better, where my knowledge is 10 times more, and we're gonna help you make your boring vlog a little more interesting. So first things first, everything can come off as boring even if you're the most interesting person in the world. If you don't know how to depict it, it's gonna be boring. So you can do that vice versa and make something that's super boring, super interesting, depending on how you show it off, how you depict it. So today, I'm gonna go over how to make a boring vlog like staying at home, not doing anything into a super interesting well put together vlog. So first of all, I wanna go over three different kinds of vlogs. So the three different kinds of vlogs are the voiceover vlogs where you play a bunch of clips and you talk over it is basically what I do a lot in my videos. If you've ever watched my uh, one day I woke up in LA video, that was a voiceover vlog. For a really, really long time, whether it be Instagram or in person, these people are the ones that made this trip for me because they gave me that adventure and they're pretty amazing people. Another one is the personal one where you kind of grab the camera, you walk around and you talk like this. Cold. Cold? How are you doing, Deborah? It's summer. It's warm. That's going to be the more personal kind where people are kind of more intimate following you throughout the day. And then you also have the no voice one where you literally play music and add clips. It's more of like a montage travel style video, not so much as a vlog. But some people call it vlogs, so I had to include it in the categories. So those are the three main kinds of vlogs. So depending on what you want to do, you're going to want to need specific things. All of them, of course, need B-roll. B-roll is the most important thing. So we're going to end up talking about B-roll. But first, let's talk about transitions. So oddly enough, just like last year, today I need to do my laundry because, well, I haven't done laundry in like three, four weeks. So it's been a while. So I need to do my laundry. And that right there was a transition, if you didn't see, because I faded out the camera to black with my hand, boom, and then came out with these pair of pants right here. So transitions are everything because it makes it super interesting because the viewer doesn't really expect to see something like that because, well, it basically adds for a little bit of creativity. So. When you want to get creative, using transitions to go from one place to the next is super interesting compared to a jump cut, which still works, but transitions are just going to make your vlog 10 times more interesting. It's going to make it a little bit more immersive. So if you're transitioning from like inside your house to a cafe or to your car or something, add a little bit of transitions if you don't have anything else to transition from. So if you're not walking to your car and recording that, Maybe you can just throw in a transition and make a quick jump cut or a fade or something super interesting along those lines. Now there's many of ways to do transitions. I have a different video on that so I put it in a card somewhere here or a link in the description so you guys can check that out. But transitions, there's so many different things that you can do and it's from like the swipes to the covers to the you know pushing in and out. It doesn't really matter. There's so many different ways that you can transition from one shot to the next. So anyways, I'm gonna put my stuff into the washer and let's get some B-roll. So I just put my laundry in the washer and I haven't drank anything this morning so I need to get some water. Maybe something else to drink, maybe some coffee or something. Kind of tired and I got a pretty long day out of me. So let's uh, check out what the fridge has to offer for me. So my mom likes to do this weird thing where she puts coffee into a separate container, makes it the night before, and then leaves it in the, one of these so we can pour it out and drink it. I don't know, I'm not feeling it. So how about we just get some coconut water? Cool.
As you can see, there are so many different ways that you can transition from stuff and pick different places to transition to. You just have to be super creative with it. So right now we are inside of a chip bag, so I'm gonna go enjoy these chips. And um, we'll get back to you guys. had to clean up after that one but yeah again transitions are completely up to you there's so many different ways to do transitions and you get super creative and this is kind of like one of those turning points where people are like wow this guy's transitions are amazing I am definitely going to subscribe to him because like JR Ali he has amazing transitions Peter McKinnon has amazing transitions and though the transitions are super eye-catching and this is what kind of brings people in and like wow this person is super creative because if you can transition from one spot to the next in a super creative way imagine the things that you can do for something that's even more important than just a simple transition now another thing for a boring vlog that keeps it interesting is having a talking point. Always have something to talk about. For me, it's going to be a lot easier because I'm explaining to you how to vlog and make it that boring vlog a lot better. So always have something to talk about, whether it's what you're doing, what you plan on doing today, what your plans already are for the day, or what you plan on doing in the next week or so. Just talk to your viewers, let them know what's up, let them know what's on your mind. Tell them what you're thinking about. Tell them everything. Don't hold back. It's good to always have a reason to make a vlog because if you don't have a reason to make a vlog, it's going to be really hard to conjure up something to talk about. So the point of having a vlog, so let's say you pick a theme. Let's say I, for me, I'm teaching you guys how to vlog. So this whole entire vlog, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm going out to eat, whether I'm meeting up with a friend, throughout the vlog, I'm going to mention something about how to make a boring vlog better because that is the centralized theme of the video. Sorry about that. Let me turn that off. That is a centralized theme of the video. So we are always going to refer back to that specific theme of how to make your boring vlog better. So this entire video is going to refer back to that centralized theme. So let's say that your vlog was about going to school or your first day at school. So everything is going to be talking about your first day of school. Everything has to relate to your first day of school. Now, not completely everything, but most of the video should all tie back into that specific general topic, that, that main focus, so that the video has a purpose, the video has a reason, and people can kind of go along with it, and it's not all over the place. Now, if you want to make a good vlog, you also have to put in the effort. You have to put it in because you can do different angles, like what I just did, a transition from cutting jump cut from there to there. If you want to get a video of you getting out of the car, you got to get out of the car first, set your camera up, and then get back in the car, and then open the door again, and pretend like you literally just walked out of your car. A lot of people do that. Like, set up your camera beforehand. Get different angles because the effort really shows. Your viewers gonna be like, wow, this person is putting in so much effort for me. I'm gonna subscribe to him, give him something that he wants and he's gonna give me what I want. I love his content, it's super interesting. He puts in so much effort into his videos. I can feel the dedication and the, the drive that he puts into his videos and I wanna be like that. So definitely put more effort into your videos because the more effort you put, the more retention you're gonna get. People are gonna keep coming back like, man, this guy is awesome. He's super nice. He puts in all this effort into his videos for us, and I love it. So they're going to come back. That is how you get retention. You got to show them that you care because they can actually see whether you're putting in effort or not because your videos will look 10 times better if you put in the effort compared to when you don't. Seriously, though, putting in effort doesn't take that much work. So just get those different angles. Set up your camera beforehand and ride your bike over to the camera and then just like skirt over and kind of talk to the camera. Jump on the floor. There's so many different ways that you can get creative and put in some effort. Just even just the slightest bit of effort will increase your viewership, increase your retention and just give you some overall satisfaction with your videos and for the viewer's satisfaction to your videos. Basically, the idea is to create a movie or create a story with your vlogs. Make it super interesting and make them feel like they're watching something in theaters, you know? That's the whole point of YouTube, to share videos. And if you want people to get super interested, make it like something that like, make it like a movie, make it like the Avengers movie, make it like John Wick 3, make it super interesting and immersive so that they can sit there and watch it. And talking about immersive, we are gonna jump into you. Get it? 
I literally jumped into B-roll. B-roll is basically the secondary footage that isn't the main footage. It's used to kind of show the area give off a vibe of what's happening, some details and whatnot. B-roll is that secondary footage that gives the viewer an experience to kind of live that experience with you, whether it's feeling it, seeing it, smelling it, hearing it. You wanna be able to give them as much as you possibly can to make them kind of be there with you. B-roll is very good for setting the scene. So if you wanna get like, start off your vlog with a drone shot and a title screen, kind of set the scene of the video, make it a movie. Set up the scene of you in New York City, get the street signs and the, the buildings, or even if you get a helicopter ride, get the city from above. That would be amazing, you know? Get a bunch of different stuff that you can do, some time lapses, throw it in there, and that could count as B-roll. Everything counts as B-roll. Here are some examples of some B-roll. Now, all of this B-roll can be used in any way you possibly want. Throw some music over top, make it super cinematic, throw those HD bars down if you feel like it. Everything goes. You can do whatever you want because it's your vlog. But B-roll is super important because it sets the scene, it gives the user an experience, and it makes them feel like they're there with you. And if they feel like they're there with you, it's a lot more relatable. They can feel it. They, you give them value. Like, wow, I really, I really felt that I really want to go now. I really want to go to New York because this New York vlog was so amazing, so immersive. It made me feel like I was there. And now I definitely want to go back, but I've never been before, so... Let's go for the first time because this vlog just made it so much more interesting. Let me get off the floor real quick. <clears throat> so B-roll is the difference in vlogs actually. So one vlog could be super amazing and not have any B-roll at all. But the next vlog that is basically the same thing could be 10 times better because of the B-roll. The B-roll sets the whole video together. It brings it all together because if the whole video was just this, Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, yeah, so today we're talking. Okay guys, so now we're at a cafe, blah, blah. But there's no b-roll so you don't really nobody gets to see anything so the most you'll get is hey guys so i'm at a coffee shop here's my coffee um yeah so i'll see you guys later you need some b-roll you need to show off what's going on in the scene you need to show transitions from one to the next so if you don't use one of those hand closing transitions or any of the swiping transitions and you want to transition from one scene to the next so let's say that i transitioned me from walking here to my car I could do so many different things using B-roll, like this. So right now we're in the car and it is super hot. It's like 90 something degrees, maybe even 100 right now in the car because it's so hot in the car before you start it. You can see my hair is already messing up and I'm sweating. So we're gonna go back inside and then I'll explain what happened here because it's really, really hot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sat on my camera. Anyways, so yeah, if you saw that B-roll sequence, Plus that uh, getting Ari into the car, that is one way you can transition from one scene to the next without using transitions because you use B-roll. It is super hot. <sighs> Hold on, let me catch my breath. One more super important thing about vlogging is your personality. You wanna smile, you wanna be loud, you wanna be confident. So when you're talking, always look straight here into the lens. Don't look off to the side. Cause right now I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at me and the screen. And as you can see, it's not as immersive. It's not as personal. It's not, it's not as intense because I'm not looking straight at you. I'm looking at the screen. What's up me? Hey, you want to be talking to the lens. You want to be talking to your viewers, not yourself in the screen, talking to the viewers. So. Talk to the viewers, look in the lens because it's gonna add more personality, it's gonna make it more personal, it's gonna be more intimate. And it's kind of weird to say intimate because intimate's tied in with very, very weird stuff. Intimacy. You wanna be intimate with your viewers because that intimacy is what's gonna keep them coming back. They're gonna be like, wow, he's making eye contact with me. And some people might find that weird, but at the same time, they might like it because it makes it more personal. It makes it feel like they're there, they're talking straight to you, which I'm talking to you right now. A few notes. Your vlog doesn't have to be chronological, it doesn't have to be in order because at the end of the day, nobody's gonna know 
whether you ate breakfast before you brush your teeth or if you brush your teeth before you ate breakfast, whether you ate dinner before you ate lunch, or if you ate some pancakes at dinner instead of in the morning. Unless it's gonna be dark outside, nobody's gonna know because they weren't there recording it with you. So you literally can order it however you want. If it makes sense, it makes sense. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you can order it however you want because nobody's gonna know. It doesn't have to be chronological. It doesn't even have to be the same day. If you can blend it all together really well, you can pass it for anything you want. People who do daily vlogs, a lot of the times they do a day ahead because people can't literally, or I guess some people could, but you don't really want to record a whole vlog in one day, edit it at that night, and wake up the next morning and do it. So they do it a day ahead. So basically, they record a vlog, next day they edit it and then upload it, and then they record their daily vlog there, edit it and upload it the next day. So they're basically a day ahead or behind, whatever it is. So, But yeah, if you take all of this into consideration, you can build your own little style. Your style of vlogging is going to be your 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 forte it, nobody can tell you how to vlog because it all comes down to how you want to vlog it all comes down to what you can do in your vlog whether it's the b-roll the transitioning whatever that is you decide all of it you decide which mix to make you decide the blend to make so when it comes to all of the in-camera shots it all comes down to you and what you want to do so you have to build your own style for vlogging and it could take a year it could take a week it could take a month it all depends on you and what you want to do because as you keep vlogging, you get more comfortable. So if you aren't comfortable vlogging right now, if you're not comfortable talking in front of a camera in front of people, then just keep doing it because eventually you'll get used to it. It'll become a regular thing and it'll be normal to you. So keep doing it and you'll eventually you'll get, you know, comfortable with it. From there, just keep vlogging because you get better as time goes on. A year ago, my videos were terrible. I had a lot of effort put into them, but the video quality themselves, the videos, they weren't that great. So, but now I am making even better videos. I kept going no matter what by YouTube. It started off like a year ago at like 800 or something because it was an old channel. But now I'm at about almost 3000 because I kept going, I didn't stop. And eventually I just started gradually getting like a subscriber a day, you know? And then now I'm almost at 3K. So good for me and good for you because you just got to keep going. Now let's talk about the editing style, what you can do to edit your vlogs because there's so many different ways that you can do it and like from just the, the text on top and the music and whatnot, that is definitely going to give a whole different vibe to your video. So let's talk about that. So when it comes down to the editing, there are a lot of things that you can do. A lot of people like to throw huge text over the screen, which I also like to do, like throw huge text on the screen. For some reason, a lot of people like that. It's like a rustic, very raw style that people do when their vlogs, especially Casey Neistat, he is like the founder of big text on the screen. That is one way to do it. And you know, it, it you can't go wrong with it. When it comes to the music, the music all comes down to you. Everybody has their different styles of music. A lot of people like EDM in their stuff. I don't like EDM in my stuff anymore. A lot of people like some old jazz music, Casey Neistat kind of music. People like some chill, lo-fi, hip-hop stuff. You know, it all comes down to you. The, the music of the vlog should match the intensity, the energy, though. If you're out here, like, really screaming and stuff, it should be a high-paced, very upbeat song. And it doesn't even have to be, like, EDM or anything. It could be any genre of music, but it has to match, like, the speed, the momentum. Because if it doesn't match the momentum, two things are going to be off. So you're gonna be talking like really fast, like, hey guys, blah, 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 blah. And then the song's like really slow, like, 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 like very lo-fi, very chill, chill step, you know, some really calming stuff. And then it jumps straight back into you where you're high energy, like, hey guys, so we're finally at the coffee shop, baby. <laughs> you know, it's like, that was a weird jump. So you wanna keep the music kind of at the same momentum as the way you're talking, your energy and whatnot. So keep it very relatable, keep it, keep it. <laughs> relevant to each other you know so don't get all over the place because if you're all over the place people are gonna be like this is a weird energy from this vlog i'm kind of scared and i don't want to do this anymore 
make sure you guys export your vlogs in 24 frames per second. A lot of people don't realize it, but they, they record in 60 frames per second. I'm recording at 60 frames per second right now, but I'm going to export this at 24. And if you're watching this right now, it's exported at 24. You can see that it's not like watching a smart TV because some people don't like looking at 60 frames per second. And I'm one of those people and 60 frames per second is super annoying. So if you don't know how to export in 64 frames per second, go to your sequence settings. It's going to say your frame rate or whatever FPS frames per second. It's going to say 59, 97 or 60. Change that to 24 or 23.97 because that is going to be a lot more appealing to look at than a 60 frames per second video. A lot of people hate looking at 60 frames per second videos and honestly if you export at 60 frames per second you could lose a lot of viewers trust me a lot of people hate it one time peter mckinnon uploaded a 60 frames per second video in a vlog an entire vlog export in 60 frames per second because he forgot to export at 24 and he got a lot of comments talking about how they hated looking at it they they don't want him to upload at 60 frames per second and he just like yeah guys sorry it was an accident you know so accidents happen but still Remember, export at 24 frames per second because you don't want to lose those little viewers because every viewer counts, everybody matters. Yeah, definitely export at 24. I already told you to keep it interesting, make it personal, give them a lot of, you know, info. Give them, tell them what you're doing, tell them what's on your mind, tell them, you know, just give them a lot of personal information because if you treat them like your friend, you got to talk to everybody like they're your friend, they'll be super down for it. They'll subscribe, they'll be like, wow, this person's getting really personal with me. Let's, let's subscribe to them, you know? Sorry guys, it's like really hot and I, I'm feeling some type of way. I'm feeling kind of lazy right now, but my hair. Get creative with it. So we're wrapping it up. We're summing it up pretty much. So get creative with your vlogs. Develop your own style. Get creative with the transitions. Really go in detail with those B-roll segments because the B-roll segments are super, super important. It can turn like editing a video into something super, super interesting. And let's, let me just show you. Actually, I want to show you guys a different style of B-roll. So it, it, it plays a lot into very, very, very fast cut, but you also hear the audio. The audio is going to give you that that kind of feel like, wow, this is going fast paced. This he's like really trying to get this done. So let's let me think of a, something I can do. Let's clean my room. Let's clean this office real quick, take out some of the trash, and I'll show you guys some examples of some quick cut B-roll that could literally work for anybody. And it's super easy. You don't really have to add any music. You don't really have to do anything. It's just a quick transition, a quick action that you can do. And I never talked about this in my other video, so let's talk about it here. So pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna do small actions, record them, and make sure you're recording the audio and you're just gonna play it through. Cut very, 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 very quick. Just all you see, so you hear the sound, you see the action, and you jump to the next part. You cut out all of the nonsense, the stuff that's not important. You cut it all out and you make a very quick B-roll segment. So yeah, that was an example of a fast paced cut B-roll because all you had to do was take that most important peak second of that B-roll and turn it into something super quick, easy, fun and very high energy. Oh, it's really hot in here. Anyways guys, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Um, super, super, I think it was a pretty long video. If you guys want to make your boring vlogs better, honestly, you just have to get creative with it. The only thing you can do to make a boring vlog interesting is to make it creative because the information that you put in is super important, but it's also the way that you put your effort into the video because viewers see all the effort that you put on. So from the transitions to the B-roll, to the angles, to where you set up your camera, to how early you're going to set up your camera and then drive into your camera pretty much. So Let's say that you put your camera in the middle of the road, get in your car, drive up to your camera, get out of your car, pick it up. People can see that effort like, wow, he really just put his camera in the middle of the road, drove all the way down the street, came back around just to pick up his camera. That is effort. And people realize that it's not like people look at him like, whoa, how did he get his camera there if he wasn't even there in the first place? People can, people are smart. People think about it. People know you set up your camera beforehand and then came to pick it up. Definitely put in that effort because effort goes 
a long way when it comes to your viewers. That's all for today's video, guys. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and hopefully it helps you out. If you guys have any questions at all, if you guys have any more questions or need ideas to help out for your video, drop me a comment below. I will not hesitate to answer any of your questions. I love talking to you guys in the comments, so make sure you guys drop me something, say hello, tell me about your day, whatever it is. Let me know in the comments below. Just drop me something, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Just have an amazing day, morning, night, wherever you watch from, and I'll see you then. Peace. Woo! Almost dropped my camera. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Bye.